Warning. 3D printed spinners are not to be used for RC flight. They can explode and death or blindness may result. Don't be blind and dead. Hey folks, so today or tonight actually, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to try to, in a very layman's term or a very simple way, show you how I design a spinner in Fusion 360. Um, that I can 3D print and I normally use it for static or experimenting to see how things fit. I have made 3D printed spinners on electric motors, not gas, electric motors that have worked quite well. However, I am not endorsing or condoning anybody to make 3D printed spinners because if the spinner does explode, somebody could be hurt or blinded or maybe even killed. So. I'm doing this for educational to show you how I do spinners, okay? So what we're gonna do is jump into this, and actually let me go a full screen here. So if you're new to Fusion 360, this is gonna help you. If you're an expert, turn it off, because I taught myself how to use this, and I watch Lars Christensen on YouTube, so by no means am I saying I am an expert at Fusion 360, okay? But you, if, if you're new, you have basically three planes that you're gonna work off of, you have your origin you're going to turn on. Now, I'm going to design this in inches, which means i got to come over here and click this. Over here on the right, I'm going to pick inches. I'm not going to do this in metric. So now I've got it set up in inches, okay? I'm going to come up here and right-click. I've already named this file spinner. I'm going to hit New Component, and I'm going to name this um, um, Spinner Main and hit OK. And then I'm going to create another component, hit New Component. I'm going to call this Backplate. So now I've got my spinner and my backplate. So I'm going to actually turn off the origin there, open up the spinner, turn on my origin here. So now I've got the origin on for the spinner, okay, not the backplate. I'm going to build. Uh, actually, I'm going to build the back, back plate first. I'm sorry, folks. Let me, let me, uh, I'm just going to turn off the spinner. I'm on the back plate origin. Okay, I'm all set. I'm in inches. So I'm going to right click here, hit create sketch. Okay. And now I, for some reason, it flipped me upside down. So this is the front and I'm right side up. So I can, I, if you hit the S button on Fusion 360, you're going to see sketch shortcuts. I have all of these shortcuts set up here. If you don't have the set, the shortcut set up, you can go up here to all of these things and hit rectangle. And then you can come over here and click this and pin to the toolbar of the shortcut. Okay, and that's how I put them all on my shortcut. But I'm going to hit my S and I'm going to pick the line tool. And I know I want my prop, my, my spinner to be four inches diameter. So I'm going to come across here and hit two inches. I am then going to come up here and hit a quarter inch. And then I am going to come in one eighth, 0.125. And then I am going to come down 0.125. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here, 0.125. You'll see what I'm doing in a minute. And hit S, and then come up 1.25. And then hit S, pick the line tool. I'm going to come over here. Actually, I'm going to touch that center there. And if you drag this up, it will keep you on the same plane. Now, if you notice, that just got darkened there a little bit. That darkened means that it is a basically a closed component. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight, well, hit enter to, I'm going to hit finish sketch. I'm going to hit this right here. Then I'm going to come up create, and then I'm going to create a res, uh, revolve. I'm going to click revolve, and it's going to ask me to pick the axis. I'm going to hit select axis. I'm going to hit that. And now, as you can see, I have the start of a back plate. Okay, I'm now going to hit right click uh, in the middle of that, hit create sketch. I'm going to hit C for the circle tool and I'm going to make this 0.125 for now. 
which, uh, no, actually, I'm going to do a point um, two five. Hit that, okay, and highlight that. I can hit Q and drag that back, hit Enter, and now I have my circle on my back plate. So that's how I designed the back plate for my um, spinner, okay? So what I'm going to do is come over here to the back plate. I'm going to hit bodies and turn that off. I am going to make sure that my sketches are turned on so I can see the sketch. Now I'm going to come over and click this dot next to spinner main. I'm going to make sure that that um, layer is turned on and the origin is turned on. And then what I'm going to do is click this plane right here, hit create sketch. And as you can see, I can see the starts of my spinner, right? So what I'm going to do here is hit S, which is the line tool. And I'm going to come in here and I am going to trace this. And I can clean all this up a little bit later. And I want to stop right there and hit enter. So basically what I'm doing now is I am going to create what is going to be the spinner here. I'm going to come up four inches. Normally, if I've got a four inch um, wide spinner, I'm going to start at four inch length. If I already know exactly what it is, actually, I'm going to make this three and three quarter, 3.75. So it's not too long of a spinner just for what we're doing. Then I'm going to hit. Oh, let's see. What do I want to pick now? I'm going to pick my. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to pick fit point spine or whatever it's called. I'm going to come up, click here, come up and click about here, and then come over here and hit enter. And I can drag this around and drag that around and pull this one in because it bellied out on me. So let's just say for laughs tonight that this is the shape of my spinner. Then I'm going to come down. I want to come down here enough that I can have the screw go in the front of my spinner to hold it to the adapter that goes on the front of your um, prop shaft, okay? So what I normally do is I come down 0.75 in an inch, hit enter, and then what I'm going to do here is fit point spline, pick up this, and I'm going to kind of follow the same thickness as I can of the spinner of the spinner, but right about here, I'm going to come over and pick that up, hit enter. I'm going to twist that around so it's kind of flat here, and you'll understand in a minute what I'm doing. I'm going to hit finish. I'm going to rotate this here. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to come up here and hit create a revolve. Pick the axis. That's going to be my spinner. Hit OK. And as you notice down here, I've got the groove now that will fit in the back plate. If I come up here and pick both of them, I can see the spinner and back, back plate now. Okay. Now, to make the hole, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the body here, turn off the body here, so I'm just seeing this. I'm going to turn on the sketches. Um, that way I can see this hole right here. I am going to hit right click, offset plane, I know I want the offset plane to be at least uh, four inches right above. Hit enter. Going to right click, hit create sketch. I'm looking straight down on it now. Okay. I'm going to turn on the front. Okay. That's the front. I am going to hit C for create a circle. I bring the circle out the same diameter there. Hit enter. And then what I can do is highlight that, hit Q drag it right through and it'll cut a hole right in the front of my spinner. And if I need to now, um, turn back on that plane. If I need to reset that screw that's going to go on the front, I hit create sketch again, hit circle. I'm going to come out. Now I would know what my, my, my screw going in the front is going to look like, or my bolts going to look like before I do all of this. Cause right now I'm just doing this to teach you and then hit Q. And then I would recess this, whatever the head, the Allen head. So there's the front of the spinner. 
okay if you look at it from the underneath we had enough thickness that that should stay together to hold it to the prop adapter or uh, the spinner adapter that goes on the front of your prop shaft okay and then we turn on the back plate and that's your spinner now we want to cut some propeller um, uh, openings in this okay so I'm going to turn off this spinner I'm going to hit right click hit create offset plane again this time I'm going to pull this to the outside I want that plane to be outside my diameter of my spinner okay and then I'm going to turn back on my spinner I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to right click and hit create sketch and now and and look folks I'm just doing this on the fly I don't even know if this is a counter rotating or a, a right hand or a left hand prop right now I'm just showing you basically how to make a very generic spinner okay so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pick up right here and I'm going to come up about three quarters of an inch 0.75 enter then I'm going to pick this right here to create some kind of an arc okay and then hit s again hit align tool bring it over to here okay enter and now as you can see i have this shape now if i was really making this hit a propeller i would have centered this right here so let's go back and do that okay so you understand exactly what i'm doing i'm going to hit s here hit um create a line i'm not going to start the line until about here okay i'm going to go up 0.75 inches hit s i'm going to hit the, hit the three point arc i'm going to bring it down to the same plane okay got to make it look like a prop kind of hit s come around to here hit enter so now i have that shape there i'm going to hit that and hit q i'm going to drag it into the spinner and now I've got my opening for my propeller. Now, what I want to do though is I need to go back and check something. I want to turn off the back plate and notice I didn't go through the bottom there. I forgot to get this part here. So what I can do is go back. I can edit. I'm going to grab this line right here. I'm going to pull the whole thing down to this plane right here. Okay. I'm going to grab this point here. Whoops, I'm sorry. I want to, oh, I thought I could stretch that up. No, nope, it's not letting me do what I thought I could do. I know there's a way to do this. I just can't remember to do it, folks. So I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. And now what it's going to do is it just opened that up because I drug it down and it still remembered I had the hole there. Now, if I want to make this a four-bladed pitch prop, what I'm going to do is create, uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Maybe it's. No, it's create uh, pattern. I want to pin, create a circular pattern. So I'm going to highlight faces. I want to grab that face and that face. Then I want to select the axis. And I'm going to hit that middle axis. And as you can see, three have popped up. I want to hit four because I want it to be a four-bladed prop. I'm going to hit OK. And now it is grooves for a four bladed prop now look these are not to scale these aren't big enough for the propeller i'm just trying to show you generically how we would do this okay uh and actually i did that a little bit wrong because it is now taking out the bottom of the uh back plate so i kind of rushed this everybody i did this a little bit wrong but i'm just trying to show you what i'm doing so let, let's let's say we got to go back and fix that now okay so let's go back and fix it since I screwed it up on you. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing back to where it was up here. I'm gonna show you another way to fix this. And um, why, why did that drop? There we go. So we're gonna get this just right. Okay, we're gonna hit finish. And now the back plate should be fine. But what we left was this piece right here. Now, if this really happened and you wanted to clean it up, this is how I would do it. I would go into construction, turn on this plane again, hit right click the plane, hit create a new sketch. I'm gonna hit S here and I am going to drag a box. Nope, 
wrong box. S points. I'm going to hit that right there. Hit enter. Hit finish. So what I'm going to do now is hit this. Q. Drag it through. Well, crap. I didn't get it high enough. So what I want to do is hit OK. And I'm going to go back and modify that one. So I'm going to drag the top of this up just a little bit. Hit finish. And it should be completely gone. And it is. So now what I'm going to do is hit create a pattern circle. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to highlight that. And this should work. If not, I might start the video all over again. And hit that. Hit four. Hit OK. And it didn't work. It didn't work. I think I know why. So what we're going to do is on the hit OK. So what I'm going to do is go in and pick all of this stuff here. So hit pattern, circle, I'm going to grab that, 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 and that, and hit select axis, hit four, and hit OK, and now it worked perfect. So, notice there, everybody, even me just rushing through this, I had to go in there and squirrel around with it a little bit, but that's how you make a generic spinner, okay? Now, I have made a lot of spinners and they all work pretty uh, uh, kick butt, everybody. I mean, they they have worked fabulously, but I'm not endorsing or condoning or telling you you should do this. But I will tell you a couple of things. If you have a high pitch prop, keep your RPMs down, print with a wide, like a uh, 0.6 millimeter nozzle, um, your layers should still be somewhat thick because when you 3D print, especially ABS or ASA, the thinner the layer, the thinner that piece of molted plastic is. The thicker the layer, the thick, thicker that molted piece of plastic is. So if you think about a spinner being done in, 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 a, in basically a, a winding, the centripetal force has to tear the plastic apart for it to fail. And if you've got thin layers, it's a lot weaker than having thicker layers. So you got to experiment if you're going to put this on. Um, never try it on a gas engine. I've actually experimented with a friend and they just explode. They will not last five minutes on a gas engine. On an electric, that you keep the RPMs down. I'm talking like a 20 size or a 30 size airplane. I've had some really good success. And actually, I've tested them all the way up to my Hacker A60-16L with an 18 inch three bladed prop turning 7,500 RPM and I never had the spinner explode. But I'm just sharing this information with you because I have the data, okay? I'm not telling you, um, if you're printing a little three inch spinner and gonna put it on something, it could still be dangerous, okay? So, but there are a lot of people printing spinners that work out there, not just me, okay? So I, I, I'm just saying you gotta know what you're doing and beware of the dangers. If you're flying in a cornfield behind your house, there's nobody behind you and you're flying away from you and that spinner blew up, chances are no one's going to get hurt. But if you're going to fly at a club and there's a bunch of spectators standing around or people standing around, you have a spinner explode, somebody could get hurt. So you don't want to do that. Okay. So take this information for as much as you want, but I do not endorse. I don't condone and I'm not telling you it's okay to make your own 3D sprinters to actually spin up on an airplane and fly okay so you're on your own folks okay i mean you're on your own but this is how i make a spinner the next video i'm going to show you how i make rims now the rims i've put on a lot of my 3d printed rares that rims are on a lot of my airplanes i fly they're on my both my msl1 had a hub my msl2 has brakes and a hub um i made rims for all kinds of people's p51s uh, gosh, so I'm the next the next little tutorial is we're going to walk through how to make um, the uh, um, rims in Fusion 360 so you can 3D print them. Now, I always end my videos saying how we want to get kids involved in model aviation. 
and I've gotten feedback saying mom and dads don't have time for it. Mom and dad's got time for Boy Scouts, for Girl Scouts, for uh, the Brownies, for um, gymnastics, for karate, for football, for soccer. They got time for all of that. So if a kid really wants to get into model aviation, they're not gonna spend any more time in model aviation than they would in those. And with model aviation, at least you got a chance to get hooked on engineering and maybe get a career out of it. Very few people make a career off karate or being a brownie or a, a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout. So, and I'm not knocking those things. Those are awesome things. I, I mean, without a doubt, but I'm saying, don't say model aviation is impossible because it's definitely possible to get kids involved, okay? So I have an awesome day or night wherever you're at. I hope this helps you. Um, I try to do this as a generic and simple as possible, folks, okay? And if you want, you're probably gonna have to stop and pause and forward. And if you got any questions, ask me and I'll try to explain more of what I'm doing um, with the buttons I'm pressing and all that kind of stuff. But this was a generic four bladed spinner how to, okay? Rock on, I'll see you next time. And please like and subscribe. I'm trying to build my YouTube and my Patreon to help pay for my hobby and my ultralight and all this stuff so I don't have to use my daughter's uh, college fund. <laughs> so take care, everybody. Be safe. Be nice to each other, too. Bye.